everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about multiplication property of equality. So in this section, we're going to talk about how do you solve an equation using the multiplication and division properties of equality. And then we're also going to solve equations using the addition and subtraction properties of equality that we talked about in the previous video, together with multiplication and division properties all together. So let's start with the multiplication property of equality. In the previous section or the previous video, we found that if you add or subtract the same amount to both sides of the equation, then you have what's called an equivalent equation and the solution remains the same. So the same idea holds for multiplication and division as well, with, as long as you are not dividing by zero. So that means you can multiply or divide both sides of an equation by a number that's not zero, and you will always have the solution set remain the same. So the solution will remain the same, which means you have equivalent equations as long as you multiply or divide by a non-zero number on one side of the equation and the opposite side of the equation. So this is what the multiplication property of equality says. A, B, and C are just algebraic expressions where C cannot be zero. So if you are taking A equals B, that's your equation. So A is an expression, B is an expression. You can multiply the left side and the right side by the same number or an expression, and you'll have a times c equals b times c, and you have an equivalent equation. So in words, this means multiplying both sides of an equation by a non-zero number, or an expression that's not zero, will not change the solution set. The reason why you are not allowed to multiply by zero is you would have elimination of the variable altogether. So as long as you multiply by a non-zero number on both sides of the equation, you have an equivalent equation. So example one, we're going to use the multiplication property of equality. Solve the following linear equations using the multiplication property of equality. So number one, negative four times x equals 24. So to solve the equation, you want to isolate the x or the variable on one side of the equation. So right now it's negative four times x. To be able to solve for x, you need to divide both sides by negative 4, which is what's being multiplied with the x. So let's copy down the problem again. So negative 4x equals 24. Divide the left side by negative 4. Divide the right side of the equation by negative 4. So this will give you negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1. So 1 times x just gives you x equals 24 divided by negative 4. And that will simplify to be negative 6. And so this is the solution to the equation. Okay, so just like the last video, we can also check our answer. So check that x equals negative 6 is the solution to the equation negative 4x equals 24. So remember how you check an answer or solution to an equation. You replace all the variables with negative six in parentheses. So negative four times x, that's negative six, question mark above the equal sign. Is this equal to 24? Negative four times negative six is positive 24, so that is a true statement, which means x equals negative six is the solution. Try number two. You have t this time as the variable, divided by four equals negative seven. Okay, so this time you have the variable divided by 4. So you can rewrite this into a multiplication problem. So this implies that 1 fourth times t is equal to negative 7. So you can always rewrite division by 4 as really multiplication by 1 fourth. So now we can use the multiplication property of equality. How can you isolate the variable t this time? Well, you need to multiply both sides of the equation by 4. So this implies if you take 4 times 1 fourth t equals negative 7 times 4. So we multiply the left side of the equation by 4, and we multiply the right side of the equation by 4. As long as we are multiplying the same amount on both sides of the equation, we still have an equivalent equation. So 4 times 1 fourth, that is 1. So 1 times t will just be t. And the right side of the equation is negative 7 times 4. That's negative 28. And so that is the solution to the equation because we have t by itself.
Okay, so let's check this answer. So check. Always go back to the original equation when you want to check your answer. T equals negative 28. And the equation originally was T divided by 4 equals negative 7. So if you replace the T with negative 28, this would become negative 28 divided by 4. And is that negative 7? Negative 28 divided by 4, yep, 1's positive and 1's negative. So you do get negative 7. So that is correct. And that means T equals negative 28 is the solution. Okay, number 3. This time you have 2 thirds times Y equals 4 ninths. So again, let's start by recopying the problem. So in this problem, we want to be able to multiply the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation by the same number so that we can get 1 times Y, or just Y. So 2 thirds. How can I multiply 2 thirds with a number and get 1? It's the reciprocal. So multiply the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation by the reciprocal of 2 thirds, which is 3 divided by 2. So 3 divided by 2 times 2 thirds Y equals 3 divided by 2 times 4 ninths. So multiply by 3 halves, or 3 divided by 2 on both sides of the equation. 3 halves times 2 thirds is 1. So this gives us 1 times y is y. So we've isolated the variable by itself. That's good. Now the right side of the equation will give us the solution. You have 3 times 4, that's 12. 2 times 9 is 18. So now 12 and 18, they both have a factor of 6 in common. So if cancel out a 6 from each of the numerator and denominator. So 6 goes into 12 2 times, and 6 goes into 18 3 times. So y equals 2 thirds is the solution to the equation. Okay, so this time let's check whether y equals 2 thirds is the solution to 2 thirds times y equals 4 ninths. So take the y and replace it with 2 thirds in parentheses. So this means 2 thirds times y, 2 thirds. Does this give us 4 ninths? So let's check. 2 thirds times 2 thirds. You multiply the numerator with numerator, denominator with denominator. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9. This is correct. So that gives us a true statement whenever y is equal to 2 thirds. Okay, number four, you have negative two-fifths w equals negative three divided by four. So this is very similar to number three that we just completed. We have negative two-fifths times w equals negative three-fourths. We want to be able to multiply the left side and the right side of the equation by the same amount so that we can isolate the variable w this time. So let's try the reciprocal again. So if you multiply the left side of the equation by the reciprocal, let's see if we get one w. So multiply by the reciprocal of negative two-fifths is negative five-halves, or negative five divided by two, times negative two-fifths w equals, now do the same thing on the right side, multiply by negative five-halves times negative three-fourths. Okay, negative five times negative two, that's ten. Two times five is ten, and ten divided by ten is one. So you do get 1 times w, or just w, equals, the right side is negative 5 times negative 3, that's 15. And then 2 times 4 is 8, and 15 and 8 have no factor in common. So this is the solution, or if you want to write it as a mixed number, it would be 1 and 7 eighths. 15, 15 eighths or 1 and 7 eighths, they're the same number, so it doesn't matter how you write your answer. But this is the solution to the equation. Okay, so let's check this one. So check whether W equals, let's choose 15 eighths when we actually substitute in. So we'll use the improper fraction to check. We're going to check with this equation. Negative 2 fifths W equals negative 3 fourths. Take the W and replace it with 15 eighths. So negative 2 fifths times 15 eighths. Does this equal negative 3 fourths? Okay. When you multiply the left side of the equation, you have negative 2 times 15, that's negative 30. 
and you have 5 times 8 is 40, and negative 30 divided by 40 does reduce or simplify to negative 3 fourths. So that is correct. So W equals 15 eighths is the correct solution. Okay, number five. This time we're going to solve an equation where there's x's on the right side of the equation only. So you have 5 plus 8 on the left side of the equation, 10x plus 20x, subtract 4x, all on the right side of the equation. So 5 plus 8 equals 10x plus 20x minus 4x. The left side of the equation, we want to be able to combine like terms. We want to simplify before we start using the addition property, subtraction property, or even the multiplication property of equality. So 13 equals 10x plus 20x minus 4x. 10x plus 20x is 30x. 30x subtract 4x gives you 26x. And now, how do you isolate the x by itself? Right now, it's 26 times x. So multiply by 1 divided by 26, or divide both sides by 26. So 13 divided by 26 equals 26x divided by 26. 26 divided by 26 is 1. So you'll have x equals 13 divided by 26, which will simplify. 13 goes into 13 one time, and 13 goes into 26 two times. So it looks like x equals 1 half is the solution to the equation. Okay, and I'll let you check your answer. If you substitute in 1 half and for the x in each of these terms for x and simplify, you will get 13 on the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation. So this is the solution, x equals a half. Okay, so now we're going to solve equations using the equality properties. So we're going to use the addition property, the subtraction property, multiplication property, and now we are going to introduce what's called the division property of equality to solve linear equations in one variable. So the division property, we've actually used it a couple times already in the previous example. So what it says is that if a, b, and c are algebraic expressions, and again, c cannot be zero, if a equals b is the original equation, you are allowed to divide both sides of the equation by c. So you divide the left side of the equation by c, you divide the right side of the equation by c, as long as you're not divided by zero, you're allowed to do this, and then you'll have an equivalent equation. Your, your solution set will remain the same. So dividing both sides of the equation by the same non-zero number will not change the solution. So example two, we're going to use all four properties of equality to solve a linear equation. So solve the following linear equations using the properties of equality. Number one, 5x equals 2x plus 12. So notice that there's x terms on opposite sides of the equation. We need to combine like terms, but only if they're on the same side. So we need to take this equation, 5x equals 2x plus 12. We want to move the 2x to the left side of the equation so that we can combine it with the 5x. So subtract 2x on both sides of the equation. 5x subtract 2x equals 2x minus 2x, and you still have the plus 12. So 5x subtract 2x is 3x. 2x minus 2x is 0, that's why we subtracted 2x, so that we only have 12. So 3x equals 12. Now we can use the division property of equality. 3 times x, how can I undo multiplication by 3? Well, divide by 3. So take the left side of the equation and divide by 3, but you have to make sure you do the same thing to the right side of the equation, so divide by 3. And so this will give us 1x, or just x, equals 12 divided by 3, which will simplify to just 4. So x equals 4 is the solution. Okay, number 2. You have 4x plus 3 equals negative 13. So again, just like the last problem, we want to be able to have like terms on the same side of the equation. So this plus 3 is just a real number. Negative 13 is just a real number. So we need to get those two terms on the same side of the equation. So take the equation. 4x plus 3 equals negative 13. Subtract 3 on both sides of the equation. That way, subtract 3 will move the 3 to the right side. So 4x plus 3, subtract 3, equals negative 13, subtract 3. This implies 
4x plus 3 minus 3 plus 3 minus 3 will just give you 0. So 4x equals negative 13 minus 3 is negative 16. And now use the division property to isolate the x. So divide both sides of the equation by 4. So 4x divided by 4 equals negative 16 divided by 4. 4 divided by 4 gives you 1. So 1 times x is just x. And negative 16 divided by 4 is negative 4. So this time the solution is x equals negative 4. Okay, number 3. This time there are real numbers on opposite sides of the equation and variable terms on opposite sides of the equation. So we're going to basically take all the variable terms and move them to the same side and all the real number terms and move them to the opposite side. So 3x minus 4 equals negative 2x plus 6. So in the previous video we talked about it doesn't matter which side that you move the variable terms to as long as they're on the same side together so you can combine them. So let's move the variable terms to the left. So I need to add 2x to the right side of the equation, so I get 0. So add 2x to the left side of the equation as well. So 3x plus 2x minus 4 equals 2x plus 2x plus 6. So this gives us 3x plus 2x, that's 5x minus 4 equals negative 2x plus 2x is 0, but we'll still have the 6. So how do we move this term, negative 4, to the other side of the equation? You have to use the addition property of equality. So add 4 to both sides of the equation. 5x minus 4 plus 4 equals 6 plus 4. Make sure you do it to both sides of the equation. And so this will give us 5x equals negative 4 plus 4 is 0. 6 plus 4 is 10. And now you can use the division property of equality. Divide both sides of the equation by 5. So 5x divided by 5 equals 10 divided by 5. And so you'll have x equals 2 is the solution. Okay, number 4. This time, again, we have variable terms on opposite sides of the equation and real number terms on opposite sides of the equation. Why don't you try this one yourself? So pause the video, go through the steps on how to use the properties of equality to be able to get x by itself. And then we'll go over this problem together. Okay, so let's try this problem together. So if you want to be able to solve this equation for x, notice that you can have x's on opposite sides of the equation, but to be able to combine like terms, they need to be on the same side. So again, it doesn't matter which side you move the x terms to, as long as they're on the same side. I chose to move the negative 3x to the left side of the equation by adding 3x. So add 3x to the left side of the equation, add 3x to the right side of the equation, then you'll have 5x minus 5 equals 10, after you simplify. And now I need to move the real number terms to the opposite side of the equation. So I need to add 5 to both sides of the equation. So 5x minus 5 plus 5 equals 10 plus 5. You'll get 5x equals 15 after you simplify. And then use the division property of equality to divide both sides of the equation by 5. And you'll get x equals 3 is the solution. So in the next example, we're going to use the properties of equality to be able to solve equations containing fractions. And it actually turns out that we can use the same properties in the same way as we did in the previous sections. So in addition, the least common denominator, or LCD for short, that was used to be able to add and subtract fractions can also be used as the multiplication property of equality to be able to simplify equations and then also clear the fractions. So we're going to use the LCD to be able to clear any fractions in the problem and then we'll be able to solve the equation like we did in the previous example. So example two, solve linear equations. We're going to use the four properties of equality along with the LCD. So solve the following linear equations. All three of these terms contain fractions or denominators. So you have a denominator of three, two, and four. Let's find out what the least common denominator is. So the least common denominator, or LCD, So the first multiple that 3, 2, and 4 would have in common is 12. So the LCD is 12 for this problem. So now what we're going to do is use the multiplication property of equality. We're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 12. So that means multiply all terms 
on both sides of the equation. by 12. Okay, so not just the fraction terms, but all terms in the equation need to be multiplied by the LCD. So let's take the equation, 2 thirds x plus 1 half equals negative 3 divided by 4. So multiply 2 thirds x by 12, so implies 12 times 2 thirds x plus 12 times the next term is 1 half equals, make sure you multiply the right side of the equation by also by 12, so 12 times negative 3 fourths. So now let's simplify. You have 12 times 2 divided by 3, that will give you 24 divided by 3, x, plus 12 times 1 half is 12 times 1 is 12 divided by 2 equals 12 times negative 3 fourths. 12 times negative 3 is negative 36 divided by 4. So now I'll simplify completely. You have 24 divided by 3, that is 8, and you have x also. 12 divided by 2 is 6, and then the right side of the equation is negative 36 divided by 4, that's negative 9. So now notice what we've done. We multiplied all the terms in the equation by 12, which was the LCD, and we simplified afterwards, and now we have an equation that no longer has fractions. So this is a linear equation that we can be able to solve by isolating the x more easily. So let's take the equation, 8x plus 6 equals negative 9. Now we want to get the x by itself, so subtract 6 on both sides of the equation. So we have 8x plus 6 minus 6 equals negative 9 minus 6. So you have 8x on one side of the equation, and it's negative 15 on the other side of the equation. And now use the division property of equality to isolate the x. So divide both sides of the equation by 8. 8x divided by 8 equals negative 15 divided by 8. So that means x equals negative 15 eighths. So x equals negative 15 eighths, or negative 1 and 7 eighths as a mixed number. That's the solution to the equation that we start off with in number 1. Okay, number 2. This time it also has fractions. So number 2 says you have the equation 3 fifths x plus 1 half equals negative 7 tenths. So again, let's try the same idea. Let's try to find the least common denominator. Or LCD of all the fractions in the in the equation. So this time we have the denominator is 5, 2, and 10. What's the least common denominator this time be between all the denominators? LCD is 10. So now again multiply all the terms on both sides of the equation by 10. Okay, so let's take the equation, which was 3 fifths x plus 1 half equals negative 7 tenths. Multiply all the terms in the equation by 10. So this means 10 times 3 fifths x plus 10 times a half equals 10 times negative 7 tenths. Okay, so now if we simplify, it should turn out just like the previous problem where you don't have any denominators left and you'll have no fractions. So this implies that you have 10 times 3 fifths, that is 10 times 3 is 30, divided by 5 times x, plus 10 times a half is 10 divided by 2, equals 10 times negative 7 is negative 70 divided by 10. And so this means, after you simplify, 30 divided by 5 is 6, so 6x, plus 10 divided by 2 is 5, equals negative 70 divided by 10 is negative 7. So again, the same thing happened as the last problem. We have an equation now, a linear equation, that contains no fractions involved. So we can solve it like we did earlier. So 6x plus 5 equals negative 7. 
Let's subtract 5 to get the real numbers on the same side of the equation. So 6x plus 5 minus 5 equals negative 7 minus 5, which would be 6x equals negative 12 after you combine like terms. And now use the division property of equality to divide both sides of the equation by 6. So this implies 6x divided by 6 equals negative 12 divided by 6. And so x equals negative 12 divided by 6 will give you negative 2. And so the answer or the solution to this equation is x equals negative 2. Okay, number 3. This time we have decimals in the equation rather than fractions. So you have 0 0.08 times x plus 0 0.09 times the quantity x plus 2,000 equals 690. There are a couple ways that you can solve this equation. You can solve it like normal because we can use the calculator to be able to multiply and divide by decimal numbers. Or we can use the idea of multiplying both sides of the equation by a number so that way we can get rid of all the decimals in the same step. So to be able to do this, notice that all the decimals have two decimal places. 0 0.08, so two decimal places. 0 0.09 has two decimal places and the other two numbers that are involved are whole numbers. So since the smallest decimal is two decimal places, multiply all terms on both sides of the equation. by 100. Okay, now why 100? You have the smallest decimal has two decimal places. That would be a hundredth in terms of decimal places. So you multiply by 100 to be able to cancel out the one hundredth in terms of decimal places. Okay, so let's start off the equation. 0.08x plus 0.09 times x plus 2000 equals 690 multiply both sides of the equation by 100. So 0.08x times 100 plus 0.09 times 100 times x plus 2000 in parentheses equals 690 times 100. So let's see what happens if you multiply by 100 on all the terms. 0 0.08, that's 8 one hundredths times 100. That will just be 8. So you'll have 8 times x plus 0 0.09. That's 9 hundredths times 100 is just 9. So 9 times x plus 2,000 equals 690 times 100 is 69,000. Okay, so now you notice that we don't have any decimals in the equation anymore. So multiply by 100 actually worked. You have an equation that does not have any decimals and it does not have any fractions. It's just a nice linear equation where we need to distribute first. So 9 distributed through the parentheses. So 9 times x and 9 times 2,000. So you'll have 8x plus 9 times x, 9x. 9 times 2,000 is 18,000 equals 69,000. Combine like terms that are already on the same side of the equation. 8x and 9x are already on the same side, so there's no reason to move them around. Just combine them. So 17x plus 18,000 equals 69,000. And now 18,000 and 69,000 are real numbers, but they're on opposite sides of the equation. So subtract 18,000 on both sides of the equation, and you'll get 17x equals 51,000 after you subtract 18,000 over, and now divide both sides of the equation by 17 to get x by itself. So x is equal to, and you'll come up with 3,000. So x must be 3,000 for this equation, the original equation, to be true. So number four, this equation will also have decimals in it, so let's try the same method. You have 0.06x plus 0.04 times the quantity, x plus 7,000 equals 680. So again, the smallest decimal has two decimal places. So let's multiply all terms by 100 again. So 
So since the smallest decimal is two decimal places, multiply all terms on both sides of the equation. Okay, so you'll have 0 0.06 times x plus 0 0.04 times the quantity x plus 7,000 equals 680. Multiply all the terms by 100. So 0 0.06x times 100 plus 0 0.04 times 100 times x plus 7,000 equals 680 also times 100. Make sure you multiply that by 100 as well. So 0.06x times 100 is just 6x plus 0.04 times 100 is 4 times the quantity x plus 7,000 equals 680 times 100 is 68,000. Okay, so all the decimals have been removed from the from the equation. So now let's solve the equation like normal. Distribute the 4 to remove any grouping symbols. So 6x plus 4 times x, 4x. 4 times 7,000 is 28,000 equals 68,000. Combine any like terms. 6x and 4x is 10x plus 28,000 equals 68,000. And now how do you get x by itself? What are the steps? Subtract 28,000 first. So subtract both sides by 28,000. And you'll have 10x equals 68,000 minus 28,000 is 4,000. And now divide both sides of the equation by 10. So x is equal to 40,000 divided by 10 will be 4,000. And so that's the solution to the original equation. So now we're going to solve application problems. We're going to solve applications that involve a linear equation using the properties of equality of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division that we've learned in the couple videos. So example four, break even point. So movie theaters pay a certain price for the movies that we see each week. Suppose a theater pays $1,900 for each showing of a Disney movie. If they charge $9.50 for each ticket they sell, then the equation is 9.5x equals 1,900 gives the number of tickets they must sell to equal $1,900 in cost of showing the movie. Solve the equation for x to find the break-even point for the movie theater with a particular Disney movie. So we have the equation is 9.5x equals 1,900. Solve the equation for x. So 9.5 times x equals 1,900. We know that we can use the division property of equality. Divide both sides of the equation by 9.5 to isolate the x on one side. But you have to make sure you do the same thing to the opposite side of the equation. So divide by 9.5. So 9.5 divided by 9.5 will just be 1. 1 times x is just x. 1,900 divided by 9.5, which will be 200. Now let's see what this answer actually means. x was standing for the number of tickets that they must sell. So this is 200 tickets. So if the movie theater sells 200 tickets with each ticket $9.50, then the movie theater will break even
to pay $1,900 for Disney to show the movie. Okay, example five. Video downloads. A treadmill video app has two sales models. One is to sell a monthly subscription for $7.99 per month, and the other is to sell an individual video for $2.99 each. The company has 800 subscribers, so they will make $6,392 per month from subscribers. Suppose that D is the variable. It's the number of individual videos downloaded by users and R is the total revenue for the month. So that's how much money will actually be brought in. Solve the linear equation. R equals 6,392 plus 2.99D to find out how many downloads are required for the company to clear $10,000 in revenue for the month. Round your answer, if necessary, to the nearest video download. So since the company needs to clear $10,000 in revenue for the month. Then R is equal to 10,000. So they're telling us in the problem that the company needs to make $10,000 in revenue. We're going to replace the R, which stands for revenue, with 10,000. So this means the equation is this. The equation becomes, instead of an R, it's 10,000 equals 6,392 plus 2.99 times D. Now, this is a linear equation. D is the variable, and D is raised to the first power, or the exponent's one. So we can solve the equation for D. So let's take the equation, 10,000 equals 6,392 plus 2.99D. Let's try to get the D by itself, the variable. So we need to subtract 6,392 to the left side of the equation, because those are real numbers. 10,000 subtract 6,392 will give you 3,608 equals 2.99D. So now use the division property of equality to divide both sides of the equation by 2.99 to get D by itself. So 3,608 divided by 2.99 equals 2.99D divided by 2.99. And so now, this is where the problem says round your answer if necessary. D is equal to, so round to the nearest video download. So that would be 1,200 and the number before the 6 is also a 6. So it's bigger than 5, so round up. So D is equal to 1,207 video downloads. So what this means is that the company needs about... 1,207 downloads a month to have a revenue of $10,000. So we use all the information in the problem. We were selling uh, individual videos for $2.99, so that's where the 2.99 comes from. The 6,392 is how much money they make from selling the individual videos, so that's where it comes from in the equation. The R we replace with 10,000 because the company needed to clear $10,000 in revenue for the month. And we solved the equation. We came up with about 1,206.69. And then we needed to round the answer to the nearest video to get 1,207 video downloads. So this finishes up our discussion on solving linear equations using the multiplication and division properties of equality. 
and also how to solve equations involving decimals and also fractions. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about solving linear equations in one variable.